This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Please provide an abstract. There's a formality in academia that can't be ignored even if a man is busy with other things, like trying not to die. By mid-August, I was told that a poster for the lecture had to be printed, so I'd have to decide on a topic. That very week, however, I got the news. My most recent treatment hadn't worked. I had just months to live. I knew I could cancel the lecture. Everyone would understand. Suddenly there were so many other things to be done. I had to deal with my own grief and the sadness of those who loved me. I had to throw myself into getting my family's affairs in order. And yet, despite everything, I couldn't shake the idea of giving the talk. I was energized by the idea of delivering a last lecture that really was a last lecture. What could I say? How would it be received? Could I even get through it? They'll let me back out, I told my wife, Jay, but I really want to do it. Jay had always been my cheerleader. When I was enthusiastic, so was she. But she was leery of this whole last lecture idea. We had just moved from Pittsburgh to southeastern Virginia so that after my death, Jay and the kids could be near her family. Jay felt that I ought to be spending my precious time with our kids, or unpacking our new house, rather than devoting my hours to writing the lecture and then traveling back to Pittsburgh to deliver it. Call me selfish, Jay told me, but I want all of you. Any time you'll spend working on this lecture is lost time, because it's time away from the kids and from me. I understood where she was coming from. From the time I'd gotten sick, I had made a pledge to myself to defer to Jay and honor her wishes. I saw it as my mission to do all I could to lessen the burdens in her life brought on by my illness. That's why I spent many of my waking hours making arrangements for my family's future without me. Still, I couldn't let go of my urge to give this last lecture. Throughout my academic career, I'd given some pretty good talks. But being considered the best speaker in a computer science department is like being known as the tallest of the seven dwarves. And right then, I had the feeling that I had more in me, that if I gave it my all, I might be able to offer people something special. Wisdom is a strong word, but maybe that was it. Jay still wasn't happy about it. We eventually took the issue to Michelle Reese, the psychotherapist we'd begun seeing a few months earlier. She specializes in helping families when one member is confronting a terminal illness. I know Randy, Jay told Dr. Reese. He's a workaholic. I know just what he'll be like when he starts putting the lecture together. It'll be all-consuming. The lecture, she argued, would be an unnecessary diversion from the overwhelming issues we were grappling with in our lives. Another matter upsetting Jay. To give the talk as scheduled, I would have to fly to Pittsburgh the day before, which was Jay's 41st birthday. This is my last birthday we'll celebrate together, she told me. You're actually going to leave me on my birthday? Certainly the thought of leaving Jay that day was painful to me, and yet I couldn't let go of the idea of the lecture. I had come to see it as the last moment of my career, as a way to say goodbye to my work family. I also found myself fantasizing about giving a last lecture that would be the oratorical equivalent of a retiring baseball slugger driving one last ball into the upper deck. I had always liked the final scene in The Natural, when the aging, bleeding ball player Roy Hobbs miraculously hits that towering home run. Dr. Reese listened to Jay and to me. In Jay, she said, she saw a strong, loving woman who had intended to spend decades building a full life with a husband, raising children to adulthood. Now our lives together had to be squeezed into a few months. In me, Dr. Reese saw a man not yet ready to fully retreat to his home life, and certainly not yet ready to climb into his deathbed. This lecture will be the last time many people I care about will see me in the flesh, I told her flatly. I have a chance here to really think about what matters most to me, to cement how people will remember me, and to do whatever good I can on the way out. More than once, Dr. Reese had watched Jay and me sit together on her office couch, holding tightly to each other, both of us in tears. She told us she could see the great respect between us, and she was often viscerally moved by our commitment to getting our final time together right. But she said it wasn't her role to weigh in on whether or not I gave the lecture. You'll have to decide that on your own, she said, 
and encouraged us to really listen to each other so we could make the right decision for both of us. Given Jay's reticence, I knew I had to look honestly at my motivation.